Now we're going to take a look at one of the most important concepts in linear algebra, and that is the determinant of a matrix. The determinant of a matrix, of a square matrix, is used throughout mathematics. Okay, and it's denoted by these two bars around the matrix, or in some cases the DET function. So for a 2 by 2 square matrix, A, where we have the entries A, B, and C, D, the determinant of A is going to be equal to AB minus BC. So we multiply these diagonals. We multiply the diagonal from left, top left to bottom right, and we subtract the diagonal going from top right to bottom left. So in the case here, where we have a matrix A, 2, 5, and 7, 4, the determinant of A is going to be equal to 2 times 4 minus 7 times 5. And so therefore, the determinant of A is going to be 8 minus 35, or negative 27. For a 3 by 3 square matrix, it's a bit more complicated. So the square matrix is determined by this A11, A12, A13. But what we've done is we've created two more columns where we duplicated the first and second column and just moved them over. And the reason we did that is to make it easier for us to draw these ovals on a diagonal. What we'll do is we'll multiply each of the entries on the diagonal. A11 times A22 times A33. And then we will add A12 times A23 times A31. Then we will multiply A13 times A21 times A32. And from that, we will subtract, and again, using the same extended matrix that we created, we will subtract the diagonals going in the opposite direction. And so therefore, we're going to subtract A31 times A22 times A13, and then add to that A32, A23, A11, plus A33, A12, A21. That will give us the determinant of A. Now, a matrix is said to be orthogonal if the following is true. A times A transpose equals A transpose times A and gives us the identity matrix. So if we multiply these two matrices together, we will end up with an identity matrix. So in other words, an orthogonal matrix will be when you multiply two matrices such that you end up with the identity matrix. But a single matrix itself is said to be orthogonal if you multiply it by its transpose and you end up with the identity matrix. The inverse of a matrix is a li little bit more difficult to calculate. The inverse of the matrix is such that when multiplied by the matrix, the inverse yields the identity matrix. So therefore, we need to find a solution such that when we multiply the inverse of the matrix times the matrix itself, we get the identity. Now, we won't do this by hand or uh, calculations. We'll allow R to do this for us. But this is what it would look like. A times the inverse matrix equals a matrix multiplication, 4 times negative 2 plus 3 times 3, and then 4 times 3 plus 3 times negative 4. Then on the second row, 3 times negative 2 plus 2 times 3, and then 3 times 3 plus 2 times negative 4. And when we do this, we end up with the identity matrix. Matrices that have an inverse are known as invertible and those that don't have an inverse are known as non-invertible. Now, it's important to note that not all matrices are invertible. That is, that a matrix multiplied by its inverse is equal to the inverse matrix multiplied by itself, and both of those would equal the identity matrix. A square matrix that has no inverse is considered a singular matrix. One of the key properties of a square singular matrix is that the determinant of this matrix is zero. But for the purposes of this discussion, a square matrix is singular if its determinant is 0. So here's an example. We have a matrix A, 1, 2, 2, 4. The determinant of A is 0, and therefore it's a singular matrix. Now, matrix division is a little bit different, because we've already spoken about matrix multiplication, but we skipped the division portion until we could do the inverse. Let's assume we have these two matrices, and we actually want to do a division of A divided by B. In order for us to do that, we will need to determine what the inverse of B is. When we find the inverse, it just becomes a straight multiplication, A times the inverse of B. So therefore, if we're dividing A divided by B, 
we're actually going to be multiplying a times the inverse of b. And we have the example here below. Now, the trace of a matrix is the sum of the diagonal elements. So in this case, 4, 1, 6. So the trace of A is only focused on the diagonal. And this is used widely later on when we're dealing with various aspects of the covariance matrix, especially dealing with the variance of particular variables. So here, the trace is 4 plus 1 plus 6, which is 11. 